Six candidates are in the running for three seats on Cupertino's City Council. As part of the City Channel's ongoing coverage of this race towards Election Tuesday, you're about to see an up-close and personal introduction to one of those candidates. This is Candidates Q&A with hosts George Moore and Mei Hui Huang, and featuring tonight's Cupertino City Council candidate, Bob Levy. Hi, my name is George Moore. I'm with the Cupertino Courier Weekly. Hi, my name is Mei Hui Huang. I work for World Journal. It's a Chinese language daily. And tonight on Candidates Q&A, we are happy to have with us candidate Bob Levy. Bob, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much for being here to talk with me. Yeah. Let's get started here. Um, one of your goals you mentioned uh, is producing a lasting general plan. Um, what do you feel are the three most important aspects of this plan? Uh, the three most as most important aspects, as far as I'm concerned, on the plan are housing, traffic, and infrastructure. Uh, we have a severe shortage of housing for people who work in the city and who can't afford to live here. Uh, we have bad, bad traffic problems around all of the schools in the area. You can tell the difference between uh, summertime when the schools are out and uh, wintertime when schools are in by the amount of time it takes to get past the school. And we have sort of a deferred uh, infrastructure uh, road care program. Uh, it seems to me that whenever money runs short, that's one of the first things that gets slowed up a little bit. And the difficulty is, uh, having been born and brought up in New York City, I can remember vast quantities of potholes, uh, road heaves because of the frost heaves there in the wintertime. And unless that stuff is taken care of when it occurs, it's a disaster later on. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, my question for you, Mr. Liv, is that when we look at Cupertino, we see a city of diversity. Census 2000 said that the current population is around 50,000. And in that 50,000, we have 44% of Asians, Chinese, and Chinese alone is 12,000. Now my question is that, um, regarding this, what do you say to this cultural and ethnic diversity uh, in the city? And what kind of a role you're going to play regarding bridging the gap, if there is any, and between different groups and uh, help integration? Okay, let me tell you a little bit uh, first. The Levy family um, cited came from Germany, from France, and from Holland. The McConnell side of my family obviously came from Ireland. So I'm a polyglot mongrel, if you will, that most <laughs> of us here in the United States are. It doesn't make any difference to me which ocean people's ancestors came across. Uh, I don't like the term Asian American or African American because we don't use the term Euro American. We're all Americans. And as, as if I go back to my high school days, I attended an all boys high school. Uh, it was a competitive entry situation. Two of my best friends in my last years of high school were boys named Stan Schwartzwalder and Fang Huey. <laughs> and I went home and complained to my parents, how come I don't have an interesting name like that? So they called me Fang for a period of time. Basically, I don't have a problem uh, I worked in a fresh air camp for five years back in New York State. Uh, children from Manhattan and the Bronx, uh, large quantities of Hispanic children. Uh, it was right after World War II, so we had refugee children from a variety of countries. Uh, the universal thing was they were there to have fun and get healthy and stay healthy. And I had no problems uh, there either. Uh, and what kind of a, a play you're going to? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, what kind of a role you're going to play um, in helping? I mean, diversity mm -hmm. means there are differences. Uh, there are differences in my family. Uh, I have Catholic ancestors, Protestant ancestors, and Jewish ancestors. 
And if you look back in history, there probably was as much bloodshed among those various groups as there were among different nationalities or different people with different skin colors. I think that if you look at the high schools, uh, or the elementary schools even, right at the moment, the Chinese population in the Cupertino School District is probably close to 50 percent, if not more. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the elementary school district, I suspect that the Euro-Americans are in the minority. And the net result of that, both at the high school, junior high, and elementary level, have been to raise the standards. Uh, we have smarter kids, sm hard-working kids from smart, hard-working parents who have moved into the city. And we've always had smart, hard-working kids. But the ones who are coming in now probably have more incentive to be smarter and more hardworking than the others because they feel a uh, sense of dislocation. Um, I, I sometimes am concerned. I was just reading a book on magic, um, magic being the name for the intercept program that the U.S. had before and during World War II. And we did one of the things that I always considered a horrendous uh, break in justice, which was we moved vast quantities of American citizens into relocation camps because we were concerned that they had established themselves, not always in their own volition, in, in quote, I'll use the term ghetto to, uh, to describe a group of people who racial, uh, national, cultural heritage was similar. When I was growing up in New York, we had ghettos of Germans, Italians, Jews, Hispanics, you name it. Uh, when those groups that held not national, not U.S. citizenship, were suspected of being spies or saboteurs. Uh, the government's decision was to move them out and rather than break up families, to dis dislocate the whole family. And I thought that was terrible. Uh, even with later evidence that says there may have been some of the uh, native-born Japanese who uh, were involved in uh, spy rings, I still think that was the, the wrong thing to do. We should have rounded up the ones who were provably guilty and left the other American citizens to do their thing. And, and the thing that concerns me is things like this American spy plane that got into an accident uh, in, over China and was uh, down. Uh, it concerns me because what would happen if tensions between China and the U.S. were to escalate? Would we then say, oh, the Chinese are sending their children to Chinese language schools, they're teaching their children to be loyal to China, to uh, revere their ancestors in China? Uh, would we then say, oh, we did the right this thing back in 1942, we ought to do the same thing here? Okay, and that concerns me. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I didn't I answer your question. Speaking of youth, uh, what goals do you have regarding the youth of Cupertino? Regarding what? Youth in Cupertino. <sighs> <laughs> I'd like to see him grow up strong, healthy, and educated. Uh, just this last week, the uh, city passed a resolution to establish a teen commission. They want to uh, have representatives from the three high schools and the two junior high schools that are in the uh, city. And they want to include only those teens who are in the residents of the city. And I think that's going to be very difficult to do. Yeah, I think that to some extent we overplay our hand in saying you can't play baseball unless there's a league to play it in. You can't play basketball unless you're playing for a team. You, you can't play soccer unless you're part of a youth group that plays soccer. Um, when I was growing up, we used to play softball on the street and stickball on the street and basketball when we could 
find a backboard and nail it to a, a light post. Um, I don't think that youth needs as much attention as we seem to think they do. Um, I get the impression from some of the children in the neighborhood that during the school year, most of them are busier than a cat chicken with two heads <laughs> trying to get all their uh, homework done in the time that's available to them. Um, certainly we should have some activities that would uh, enable these people to take part in things that they otherwise would not be able to afford. I'm concerned that we may be going overboard on it. Well, yeah. Mr. Levy, six qualified people are running for the seats and only three are going to make it. What do you think you can, why do you think you can do a better job than the others? Because and what is the top priority issue you want to handle after you're elected? I couldn't have a better straight man if I'd asked for one, May. I really <laughs> appreciate the question. The thing that I want to do is solve a problem that's been there for 23 years since Proposition 13, and that is the traffic around our schools. I live in an area uh, between Kennedy, Lincoln, and Monte Vista High School. We have 4,000 students to come into those three schools every day. Three quarters of them either drive themselves, some of the high school students, or are bused there by their parents or in small carpools. And there aren't very many um, three people carpools. So we have something like 1,500 to 3,000 cars coming into the uh, area every day. If you go and talk to the PTA or the neighbors of any of the other schools in the city, you'll find that they have the same sort of problem. It's not as concentrated because they don't have as many, but they don't have as many streets to access the schools. And so that you go to the meetings and that's one of the things they talk about. And what I think we should do is put in school busing. I think we can reinstate school busing. Cupertino Union runs what they call safety busing for a fee and they bus students who would otherwise have to cross a major roadway, such as Foothill uh, Ex Expressway or uh, 280, come around 280 or Stevens Creek Boulevard. And those buses are pretty full, and the parents have to pay a fee to get those children on the buses. All of us who have been complaining about the traffic around the schools should be willing to pay an equal fee to get all those cars off the streets. And I think that's more likely to happen if I'm elected to the council than if I'm working on it from outside of the council. Yeah, and my first part of the question is, why do you think you, are, you can do a better job than the other candidates and we should vote for you? Probably because I've been uh, paying more attention to the uh, situation in more areas for many more years than they have. One of the problems we have is that we put in term limits, and I'm not sure anymore that that's a good idea. Uh, our council members, the good ones, get ousted at the same time that the bad ones do under those cir circumstances. Um, certainly, uh, people with uh, the experience that uh, Patrick Kwok and uh, Jeff Patno have um, would be valuable additions, but I don't believe that either one of them has paid as much attention to the entire city as, uh, as I have over the last 10 or 15 years. About 10 years ago, I wrote a book, a couple of books, on the history of Cupertino, and in doing so, I had to dig into all sorts of things. Uh, and have seen some of what's happened over the years as we changed from an agricultural community to a, an urban uh, manufacturing community. Um, um, is it realistic to believe Cupertino can limit growth but still provide housing solutions in the present and the future? Uh, in the folder that I have tucked over there, <laughs> but that I can't pull out, the city has planning department has indicated all of those houses and areas that they think 
could be uh, redeveloped, it would be a one term to use, uh, older houses that could be torn down and have a larger home put in or uh, on a very large lot where a number of houses could be put in, as has happened in places on Stelling and on uh, McClellan Road and so on. There are a number of places where one small older home went out and four or five bigger ones went in. And they also show areas around the fringes where there are large areas that might possibly have development going in. Article in uh, this last week's Courier, for example, talked about our discussions with Compaq and, and how we hoped they would build more housing for the amount of production space they wanted to put in. Mm -hmm. um, the charts that the city planning department has uh, produced show housing going in and along the Bub Road industrial area, which says some of that uh, industrial building would have to go out, showing some of it up in the area where the P&W Super is up on Homestead, that whole row of stores up in there, and the apartment houses to the west of them, which are older, Mm -hmm. and which could conceivably then uh, be torn down and ha be replaced with larger uh, buildings. And uh, the difficulty that I see in any of these propositions is that with land being a million dollars an acre and up, that it would be difficult to put tents on those pieces of land <laughs> and sell them for affordable prices. Yeah. So it's going to have to be uh, apartment complexes which are not uh, terribly spacious, which do not have very much in the way of amenities, but which are good, solid, comfortable living for people who can't afford to buy a house in the city. My question is that, next question is that, Cupertino, like every other city, is changing, okay? And uh, what do you want it to be like in four years? What do you think it's going to be different from now with you in this city council? Well, I would hope that we'd be able to do more about affordable housing, to put in some of these apartment complexes, to build an apartment version of um, the sort of thing that happened on Long Island that used to be famous, Levittown, in which they built small houses on a slab on very small lots, no garages, no uh, basements, but they were wonderful for people who had just come back out of the army, just gotten married, were starting to have children. Uh, that's the kind of apartments that we need. And I think the city council is definitely in a position to change the development scheme from the sort of thing that we've been doing an example, there's a proposed development along Imperial Avenue between Imperial and the railroad tracks, and that's going to put in 56 townhouses, six of which will be below market rate. And the city council is very pleased that they will have six below market rate houses, uh, uh, townhouses that will be available for sale, and that there'll be 50 others, but the problem is a below market rate apartment or townhouse is not really an affordable one. Okay. It just means that it costs less uh, than the others. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you mentioned um, improving communication between the city council and its, its residents, as well as improving the council's response to this. How do you plan on, on doing well, that? Well, I have two things that I'd like to do uh, on that. One is when we incorporated as a city in 55, we had five city council members. Mm -hmm. uh, for most of the last year, we've had only four. Mm -hmm. uh, we went from 2,500 in 55 to over 50,000 now. And I question very strongly whether five is still the right number of city council members. I would like to see more council members on, on the council. We are allowed by Constitution to have five, seven, or nine. And I would like to see those council members elected by districts so that if you had a problem, you would know there was one city council member who was representing your district 
that you could go and talk to. And the other advantage of districts is that in a situation such as we had this year when a council member resigned and the council decided, among other reasons, that having a citywide election would take too long and cost too much for the amount of time that the new council member would be on before these fall elections. Mm -hmm. uh, the, with a district uh, scheme, you'd only have to set up an election for that district and because it would be a district, uh, if there were seven members, for instance, instead of uh, each council member speaking for 50,000, as they do now, mm -hmm. each council member might speak for 7,000. And that would mean that uh, people would feel a little bit freer, I think, that knowing who they could talk to and, and what might happen as a result. Now, do you think that um, would, would it in improve in responsiveness, though? I think so. I think that uh, on the same basis that we have uh, state assemblymen as well as state senators, um, the assembly members usually are um, more eager to get out and talk to their uh, rep the people they're representative representing because there's a smaller group they can do that. Now I'll admit that I don't think I'd want to have a city council of 50 members say. <laughs> Uh, that'd be unwieldy, and I think that just changing from five to seven here would be expensive when you look at the setup here in the council chambers. We'd have to find room for two more seats on the council uh, bench. Okay. Think of yeah. time for one more. One more? Okay, this is going to be quick. Can you single out a moment, and that moment you said to yourself, this is this is it. I want to run for city council. Can you recall that moment? I certainly why? can. Monte Vista High School is going through a reconstruction period. Oh. Monte Vista High School okay. for the last um, 15 years has had parking problems. Street after street around the school have gotten permit parking to keep the students from parking in front of their houses. Earlier this year, Monte Vista High School and the city established a parking task force committee. The parking task force committee was a recommendation that we have mandatory student parking in front of the houses. And it was at that point that I felt there were two recourses. One was to blow up the city council and the other one was to run for the city council because it seemed to me that the city council ignored totally the, the fact that the citizens had asked for permit parking expressly to keep students from parking in front of them, in front of their houses, and that uh, by saying, okay, we could go along with a mandatory program if that's what they wanted, they were totally ignoring uh, the desires of the hundreds of uh, families involved. They did change their mind when a petition was submitted with uh, signatures from, I believe it was over 300 houses. But uh, that was the point in time where I decided uh, that this, the city council needed somebody who, although he might not hear well because of the hearing aids, would listen once I got them adjusted correctly. Thank you. Great, thank you. I think that concludes this, uh, this program. Thank you very much for being here, Bob. Thank you very thank much you for asking all the right questions. Okay. I appreciate okay. your time. And I really, I really attempt to be colorblind. My children also are colorblind when it comes to people's skin. Okay, the thing that's important is what the people are like. It's not important at all uh, what their colors or skills are. Thank you again. Thank you. Tune in to the City Channel for local election information and coverage through the November 6th election. Program schedules can be found at various locations, including City Hall, the Cupertino Public Library, the Cupertino Scene, and the City's website. While at the website, you can find more information on City Council candidates and on Measure D. You will also find helpful links to voter information pages. Exercise your right to vote on November 6th by heading to the polls. <laughs>